Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? And welcome to Mr. Morrow's Lecture Series. Today we're going to be talking about plate tectonics, which is one of my favorite subjects because it really helps explain how this beautiful planet of ours has been shaped along the years. So let's go ahead and begin because I'm ready to teach and I hope you're ready to learn. Let's first start with learning about Earth's three basic layers. I went ahead and hard-boiled an egg and cut it in half in order to give you a visual representation of the crust, which is the outer shell of Earth, similar to the outer shell of this egg. It's cracked up, it's made up of different pieces, similar to Earth's crust. If we look below the crust of Earth, we're going to find what's called the mantle. And the mantle is represented by the egg white here. So the crust kind of floats on top of the mantle. And the mantle's moving this crust, and we're going to learn about all this later. And it's moving this crust because of the core. The core of Earth is represented in this egg by the yolk, which is in the center. So in an eggshell, pun intended, those are the three basic layers of Earth. Now in order to really understand plate tectonics, we're going to have to go back in time a bit. So let's go back to 1912, where a meteorologist and geophysicist by the name of Alfred Wegener developed his continental drift theory. The theory explained that Earth was joined about 300 million years ago, forming one enormous landmass called Pangaea. And that is derived from the ancient Greek meaning all land. And Pangaea was surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa. Pretty. According to his drift theory, Pangaea began to break up about 175 million years ago. And over time, the continents moved to their current locations. I color-coded the continents so you can imagine their journey, which must have been pretty cool. So how did Wegener come up with his theory? He first noticed that South America and Africa seemed to fit like puzzle pieces. And upon further investigation, Wegener found that, first of all, many rocks found and studied in both Argentina and Brazil, which are here in South America, were exactly the same as those found in South Africa. He also found that fossils of the Mesosaurus, which was a small freshwater reptile, were found throughout different continents. Very hard to imagine how a small freshwater reptile could survive crossing oceans. Food for thought, huh? He also found that fossils of the Glossopteris plant were found in South America, in Australia, in Asia, and in Africa. He also found that coal beds in North America, Belgium and Great Britain, around this area here, were deposited during the same time period. How can that happen if there's an ocean in between those two? And also he found that fossils of trees like bananas that usually grow in temperate areas were found in polar areas. Pretty cool, huh? But despite all his findings, Wegener's continental drift theory was not taken seriously until the 1950s and 60s, when the theory of plate tectonics was slowly developed. The theory of plate tectonics explains why Wegener's continental drift theory was accurate after all. The theory of plate tectonics states that Earth's crust is made up of moving sections or plates which are constantly being powered by thermal convection currents created by Earth's mantle. Let's think about what convection currents look like. Let's think about a boiling pot of water. Okay? And let's say we have pasta. The pasta is going to go ahead and heat up and rise to the top of the pot because it becomes less dense as it heats up. It's going to cool down, become more dense, sink back to the bottom. Heat up, become less dense, rise back up to the top. Cool down, become more dense, 
sink right back down to the bottom. As this uh, spaghetti noodle heats up and becomes less dense and rises and becomes more dense, this repetitive up and down motion is similar to the convection currents within Earth's mantle, which are continuously moving Earth's plate. If these spaghetti currents continue and model what's happening in the mantle of Earth, you would form a circular convection current as such because of the heat, because of the changes in density. It's pretty awesome. So these convection currents are constantly moving Earth's plates. And the theory of plate tectonics also explains that Earth is actually made up of a solid inner core, a liquid outer core, an upper and lower mantle, and a crust. This little blue part is the ocean and the black part represents the continents and mountains. So that's, that's my crust here on my drawing. Now the lithosphere. The lithosphere is a combination of the crust and the semi-rigid upper part of the mantle. And the lithosphere is made up of seven major plates and several minor plates which contain the Earth's continents and oceans. The seven major plates are the North American, South American, African, Australian, Eurasian, Pacific, and Antarctic plates. These plates are constantly on the move, although slow, only averaging anywhere from 2 to 10 centimeters a year. The plates are at different sizes and they move in different directions. And this plate, plate movement is what helps shape the topography of Earth. Directly below the lithosphere lies what's called the asthenosphere. And the asthenosphere is a semi-fluid section of the upper mantle which floats the lithosphere around due to the convection currents that we already talked about. So now that we know that the plates are moving, let's talk about how they move. Plates move along three main boundaries. Convergent boundaries, as seen in the picture to the right here, actually the video that I recorded using sponges, are where plates collide or crash into each other. Earthquakes occur and both mountains and volcanoes are formed along convergent boundaries. In fact, the largest mountains in the world, such as the Himalayan and Euro Mountains, were formed along convergent plate boundaries. Divergent boundaries also as seen in the video, which I use sponges to illustrate. Divergent boundaries are where plates separate apart from each other. Earthquakes occur and volcanoes, ocean ridges, and rift valleys are formed along divergent plate boundaries. On land, the East Africa Rift in Kenya and Rio Grande Rift in New Mexico are great examples. In the ocean, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and East Pacific Rise are also great examples of such formations. Transform fault or strike-slip fault boundaries, also as seen in the video portrayed by sponges, are where plates slide by each other. And as they're sliding, they get stuck. And when they get stuck, they release. And when they release all that energy, Earthquakes occur, and faults are formed along transform and strike-slip fault plate boundaries. One of the most well-known faults in the United States of America is the San Andreas Fault, where the Pacific Plate is sliding past the North American Plate. The following earthquakes have occurred along the San Andreas Fault. In 1906, the great San Francisco earthquake, nothing great about it, a lot of destruction, in 1940 in Imperial Valley, and in 1989 in Loma Prieta. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot and had a great time in the process. Take care now. Bye-bye.